Paul. Welcome back to the show. Here we are again. So, I am very amused. I came in this week and I see at the top of the document you have Apex Legends listed. And I'm trying to I'm trying to imagine the sequence of events that led you to attempt to play Apex Legends. So please tell me your story. Yeah, well, so uh, maybe about a year ago, or I don't know, a year and a half, um, when PUBG was big, I played a, a decent amount of player Unknown's Battlegrounds. I think it was like 40 hours total. So it wasn't a lot, but, you know, enough to have some fun. And then right around that time, uh, what is it, EA Games, I think, came out with Apex Legends? That's a good question. I, I've never played it, so I don't know who made it. Um, according to Google, it was developed by Respawn and published by Electronic Arts. So yes, your initial instinct was go. correct. So EA came out with their competitor battle royale thing that also ties into Titanfall, I think. Like the it's set in the world of Titanfall with the giant robots and stuff. Right, um, right. So maybe like there's some sort of tie-in with like the visual art style or something. I, I was never I never played Titanfall, so I was just like, well, I'll try it out. It's free to play, and uh, you know, what can be the damage? And so I tried it out, and it was it was pretty cool. Uh, I enjoyed the the different art style, more flashy, more colorful. I think it's probably trying to be more like mm, Fortnite, probably. Um, but then they had some features in there, like um, ways to talk to other players without actually. They have a bunch of chat commands without actually being able to say anything in chat so they didn't have to do any of the profanity moderating that right, one right. normally has to do when people can just say anything and that's kind of that's a clever solution um i didn't end up playing very much of it i played probably like i don't know five five hours or so of you know apex legends uh and at the time i think you there weren't any heroes and so then like in the intervening what year or two years or whatever it's been uh, i think they've changed it more to like a hero shooter where you can like choose different characters that you can play as and they all have different abilities and stuff and maybe that existed before and i just didn't notice uh but anyway right. so i had played it i haven't played it for years and then one of my kids was like hey that looks fun like it's on the you know it's on the list of steam games or whatever and uh it's like free and so i was like okay well do you want to play it? And he's like, yeah, I want to play it. So the first thing we do is like, okay, well, install the game. And we've got a high-speed internet connection, so usually it's like, it's quick. Um, but it's like, I don't know, 30 gigabytes or something stupidly huge. And right. so, like, you know, you click install, and they're used to being like, install, and then like, you know, go get a sandwich and come back, or, you know, a piece of toast or something, and, and it's like, oh, it's installed. And so it was like, install, and it's like, it's going to be an hour. So, nope, we're not playing it right now. Right. And uh, so that was the first thing. It was like, okay, well, this game doesn't want you to play it because it's just so gargantuanly, stupidly massive. Like, why would, why does it need to be that big? And maybe I'm used to, like, you know, games that use procedural generation to generate content, and this is, like, all pre-authored content, and right. there's tons of it, and there's probably, like, all the recorded voice lines and stuff. But oh, yeah. I also found oh. out that when you start the game up, it's got like this long pre-rendered like intro cutscene thing, you know, like it reminded me of Blizzard games like back in the day, except Blizzard games had like maybe a minute of, of pre-rendered video. And this was like, I don't know, it felt like it was an hour, but it was probably only like two minutes, but whatever. And it's got right. all these, all the heroes that they're trying to get you to buy skins for. And they're all like running around doing stuff and like, being themselves and having all their catchy phrases and and shouting all their combat taunts or whatever it is. I don't know. I don't know. I, I haven't played it since either. Like my kids played it a bit, um, but so I don't know how accurate that is to the actual game. Certainly, it's I embellished. Um, but this is huge cutscene thing. It's like, well, like you could have, you could have just not done. Like this is basically a trailer, right? Like this is the trailer for a game. <laughs> it's, a tra it's like watching a movie and the. And the opening five minutes of a movie are the trailer for the movie you're trying to watch. 
Yeah, and and like so, there's that, and then it's like, okay, well, they spent some of the down the time, some of my time that I wanted to be, or you know, my kids wanted to be playing this game, downloading a movie that I could have streamed, like, f you know, oh, from right. YouTube or whatever, like, and and I didn't look, but probably the video is on YouTube somewhere. So it's like, I understand, like, twenty years ago. You had to have the intro video on the disc because people couldn't download it. It would take a year to download. But now right. it doesn't. And and if I don't want to watch the video, then I shouldn't be made to download it so that I can watch it. Like you're basically putting your advertising like is yeah, it's a it's a trailer for all the cool stuff that you could buy in this game. Now it's free to play, so like fair enough. They have to sell their tat somehow. But it just felt offensive. It was like I'm trying to play this game, and you downloaded a bunch of advertisements for me instead of the game I wanted to play. Right. So that was another annoyance. So we get into the game, and then it's like, okay, create your login. And uh, it's like, you don't have a login or whatever. And so I tried to log in, and it's like, well, your your account has expired, so you have to like create a new one or whatever. So I'd say, okay, create a new Ugh. login. And then it's like, oh, your your email is already in use by another player. And so I was like, okay, well, fine. I forgot <laughs> yeah, my password. Email me my password, and and then I'll change my password. So I got my password updated, and now I can get in. And then it's like, okay, but you don't have a player ID. You need a player ID. And so I was like, okay, fine. I'll just like use DudeCon because I use that for everything. And it's like, that's unacceptable. That's not a. It, it, I forget what the error message was, but it's like, you can't do that. That's that doesn't meet our community guidelines. <laughs> Whatever. I'm like. What? Right. Like, what's wrong with that? It like it has dude in it, I guess. And so I tried something else, and it didn't like that either. And so then I got suspicious, and I I typed in this big long phrase of like, EI does EA doesn't want me to play Apex Legends, and it's like that's not acceptable. And so then I started like <laughs> erasing it one character at a time, and like trying erase one character and try it again, erase one character and try it again, and it's like no 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 that's in use by another player. No 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 no. <laughs> So how did the other guy get his username if the entire space surrounding this name is like off limits? I don't know. It So the whole thing felt very prohibitive. Like here's this gargantuan game, it's free to play, fine, but it's like huge and then they make me watch this intro cinematic and then they won't even let me use my username. Like that's the one I use for everything. Can't you just like, I don't know, Tell me what options are available. Can you make some suggestions? There's no way to be like, suggest a username that EA thinks is appropriate. Because like, I don't know. So I typed in some random numbers and it's like, no, I don't like that either. And so then I gave up and I went to Python and I generated a string of random numbers and, and letters. I asked my, my son, I'm like, hey, what letters and numbers do you want in your username? He's like, how about these ones in X's and W's and stuff? And I'm like, okay, fine, cool, cool. And so I, I had it select from that, like a So your a name is going to be a, like, a Scrabble hand. Yeah, exactly. It's just, it's just a bunch of random characters. And then I had it generate like 20 of them. And then I'm like, hey, which one of these do you like best? And he's like, I want that one. And so I copied it and pasted it in there. And it's like, okay, good job. You create a username. I'm like, you guys, you guys. So, so now we've got like this character with this absolutely bonkers nonsense character name and we want to go play some games, right? And so there's this whole menu and it's got like all these widgets that are popping out and stuff because I guess you can play it on console or whatever and, and like it's, it's not clear how to start playing the game. And so it turns out it's like in the bottom left corners is a button saying like enter lobby or something and, but you can't do that until you've done the tutorial and it's not clear how you do the tutorial so like we're clicking around trying to find the tutorial and we finally find like you know here's the you have to like change the game mode to practice mode and then like in practice mode this is a tutorial so we finally get into the tutorial mode and i'm like well i'm not going to be playing this like you should play it so i give it to my kid and he sits down and he's like all right and, you know it's mouse look it's just like minecraft okay cool off to the races like oh good we finally settle on user interface that's standardized enough that we can like get this to work and uh so he's like moving around moving forward and backward and then it's got he doesn't read super well he's only like four years old or five or something and so it's got all these prompts on the on the screen being like you know press this key to do this thing and press these keys to do these things and you have to do them all before you can move to the next step um 
So, but he just like runs off into the practice area. He's like, yeah, I'm running around and doing mantling and stuff. And like all the controls work. It's just, it's not keeping track of anything that he's doing because he hasn't done the step, that, like, you know, the right. step right at the beginning, which is like, you know, talk to the tutorial character or something. And so I finally point right. out like, hey, you have to go it's back like, and do this thing. And so he like runs back and talks to the tutorial character and then he runs off no, again and it's like no, got all these instructions the for slide. him. You have to go in the slide and then the swing set. You're doing it all wrong. Now get back in yes. the sandbox and it's 10 more minutes of that and then you can try again. It's like, are we having fun yet? <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it was. And so it, like it spawned in some guns and he picked one up and then it spawned in a bunch of more other guns. It's like, now switch guns. and But he's like off running shooting targets now with his gun. And and it's just waiting for him. You're like, come on back. It's not target shooting time. It's picking up another gun time. And uh, so he finally got through the tutorial and, and played a little bit. And that's kind of where I walked off. I'm like, all right, I've held your hand through the tutorial. You know how to play the game. I'm assuming you're going to ruin like three other randos night by joining their group and just right. being completely garbage all night long right. uh and but that's fine with me like you know ea doesn't have any kind of criteria for skill level so i'm just fine do whatever you want and uh so they he finally did get into a game with some other players and apparently he thought that he was really good at this game which okay that's i i wonder how much bot stuff they do these days like you know bots that help to train lower level or you know unskilled players so that they feel like they're doing well right if they detect you just like have no idea what you're doing they just silently put you in a game with all bots and don't tell you and let you think you're awesome yeah yeah i think pr probably that's what was going on but i don't know so they lost interest after you know a couple hours and uh i'm gonna have to uninstall it at some point to free up all that hard drive space that's hilarious Speaking of not being good at games, mm -hmm. I, I'm not good at games. Oh. This, okay, this past week, um, you know, I got out of the hospital. I'm like, all right, time to get back to work. And the doctor warned me, now, you, you know, you're a little bit anemic and you're going to be feeling that. And, you know, you just got out of the hospital. It's going to take you some time. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what I'm doing. And then all last week, I just slept. <laughs> like, I'd get up work for no i would just sit there at the computer and like drool on my like the hours would just vanish like two hours of being awake but i don't have any creativity and i just like i don't even know what i did during that time um the Ugh. time just vanished and then i'd fall asleep and then wake up and have another two hours of just sort of like zombie mode it was just, I'd fall asleep long enough for my tea to get cold and for me to forget what I was doing at the computer <laughs> and then wake back up. All right. So I spent a lot of the week, like, my goal is to get a video done. That's my goal for this coming week is this video was supposed to be out the week I was in the hospital. So it's already two weeks late. Uh, just, a, just a video on Mass Effect to go with the release of my book, right? Like, this is going to promote the book. Yeah, yeah. And um, I just had, th that's all. It's like a 3,000, three to 4,000 word script. That's, and it's stuff, it's really familiar material to me. It's not like I need a lot of research. It's, you know, just rephrasing yeah, passages you've from the book. read this whole thing over like four times now and you just finished editing it. So you know where right. you're going. Right. So this, this is a softball job i thought this was a good thing to ease me back in i thought this is an afternoon of work and it took me all friggin week to do it oh man it was ridiculous just like it took me so long so i spent a lot of the week in zombie mode not able to work and i started watching players streaming games mm -hmm. which i've never been into that before i mean once in a long while i'll watch somebody's highlight reel but I was just watching people's streams or actually VODs of like streams from six months ago. And one of them, I don't know that it was six months ago, but it was some, it was some weeks ago. This was an old stream by Sean Plott. Uh, people, his handle is day nine. Um, he's a, 
he's like a professional StarCraft announcer and a professional streamer, and he's been doing this for years. But I've always really just liked his stuff, but I, I don't follow streamers, so I like don't pay attention. But I watched mm. his streams, and one of the games he streamed was Returnal. Um, this was a game I was interested in for this year. I heard two... I loved the trailer, and but then people told me, oh, it's like Dark Souls, except kind of a roguelike. And I was like, oh, that sounds like a game I should not play. <laughs> Maybe give it a pass, huh? Right. But... I decided, hey, I'll watch Day 9 play it, and I'll get, you know, I'll get the experience of playing the game without the anger. So Day 9 is playing this, and he, you know, he plays for a good hour just exploring this weird alien planet. I love the art. I love the atmosphere. It's really good. The combat looks really cool. You've got this cool slide dodge move, and it's, you know, lots of mobility, lots of finding random stuff because it's a roguelike. And then he's like, oh. I'll bet this is a boss. I'll bet this is a boss area, you know, because it's a big open area and drops down into where you fight. And sure, sure enough, an boss, arena kind of thing. Right. Boss shows up. He fights it. And, you know, it's the first time with the boss. It's a multi phase boss fight. You don't know what's coming. And it's got some gotcha moments in it. Like, oh, it's got this big shockwave attack. You've got, you've got to jump over. And he figures that out. But then it does two of them back to back. And you can only see one of them coming because the other one's hidden behind it. And you just got to know ah. by watching this. So, you know, and you get hit by a lot of stuff you couldn't see coming. Or this, you know, you see the boss wind up. You don't know what that means the first time you play. And then he just lunges at you across the arena and boom, instantly hits you for massive damage. And there's no healing items. You you just got to do the fight with the healing you start with. And so this is all, in my book, incredibly unfair. This is stuff I've not been prepared for. And I'm viewing this as if I was playing. And oh, no. I'm just I'm getting angry for him. And mean he finally dies. And just gets smacked down, he collapses, and he is laughing so hard. Oh, I am so horrible at this. And I am just like, fucking get fucking game bullshit. That's fucking bullshit. It was the most amazing thing for me to get angry when he's having fun. And he he it took him four tries to beat this boss. And it's a long trip to get to the boss. Well, I think you can do it's a short trip. You know, you start off with starting gear, so mm. you, you gotta you gotta play for a while and get some get some good gear before you take another swing at the boss, and that just stressed me out the whole time. It was so stressful, and he was so relaxed, playing with chat, joking around, petting his cat, totally relaxed the whole time. Did not mind did not mind playing for half an hour gathering up a bunch of shit, getting a great run, and then getting pancaked by the third phase that he'd never seen before and wasn't ready for. So that was an amazing thing to learn about myself, that I get angry even on behalf of other people from these <laughs> games. It's not just the act of playing, it's the ontology of the experience. Yeah. I, I just very much feel that a game should teach me how to play and then the boss should be a test. And obviously in these games, you learn to beat the boss by losing to the boss. And that just like offends me on some deep psychological, like there's no think about it differently. It's just, no, that offends me on a, on a purely like base level. Right. Amazing. Right. Um, the game does look gorgeous. I'll, I'll link. I'll link the stream um, in the show notes in case anybody want to checks it out. Wants to check it out. Also, his stream of Hitman Three was so funny. Um, I could barely stay in my chair. I, I although I'm a sucker for any Hitman gameplay. That when somebody plays Hitman wrong or somebody plays a Hitman game unprepared. Mm hmm. I just love the sort of. Make it up, like, how you properly play Hitman is you spend a lot of time exploring, observing, listening to conversations. But you don't do that when you're playing a stream. You know, we're, we're here to beat this level. And so you've right. just got to... Boring. You're going to lose all your watchers. 
Right, so you just got to like throw yourself into it and improvise as you go. And you always end up like, oh, what's this to, oops, oh, I threw a guy off a ledge, now everybody's after me. Oh, no, okay, okay, I got away. No, wait, there's a guard here. Okay, I'll kill him. All right, now nobody's chasing me, nobody, I swatched, switched clothes, everything's fine, I'm stable again. All I got to do is stuff this guard in a closet. So you pick up the body, you get him halfway in the closet, and somebody comes in the door, hey, what are you doing? And you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> and so then you got you to gotta put that guy down and stuff him in the closet. And when he's halfway in the closet, and somebody else comes in and screams and like starts running away. So you got to chase them all over the level while they're crying for help. And there is something, uh, unlike Returnal, I find this sort of thing so funny. Like, literally, I just, I can barely hear the, the person playing the game or the game audio over my own laughter. There is just something inherently delightful about this giant murder spree gone wrong. It's like right, and one well, part of it is is a subversion of the entire premise of the game. Right, right. It turns the it, whole game into a joke. Right, like imagine a James Bond movie, but it feels like a Naked Gun movie, where he's just constantly <laughs> fucking up and accidentally killing people, and drops a chandelier on the wrong part, like on some poor bastard who is, isn't a bad guy. <laughs> but yeah, you know, like the man who knew too little, or whatever. <laughs> exactly, like. This giant complicated death trap to kill somebody that you don't even know who they were. Well, I, who, I wonder who I just killed with this amazingly complicated murder I just did by accident. So I'm a sucker for Hitman streams. And that's really good too. I'll link to that as well. Speaking of Hitman, let's do a mailbag. Okay. Dear Diecast, I'm a longtime fan of the Hitman series. With an obvious exception. The obvious exception, for those of you who don't follow my blog, is um, Hitman Absolution, which is a ridiculous game where the writer tries to participate in the comedy rather than letting you play the clown and the writer play the straight man. The writer decided they want you to be the straight man and they be the clown. And it was a very annoying game because of that. Anyway. I'm a longtime fan of the Hitman series, with an obvious exception, and an early backer of the new Hitman, the start of the most recent trilogy. Despite it ranking in a very positive niche reviews, I bounced hard off of it. Upon reflecting why, it wasn't the gameplay or level design, but the timed elusive targets. Not to delve too deep into that future, it's just a relatively small piece of content that requires the game being played at a certain time, and after that it's gone forever. What's your thoughts on that? Do you feel the same as me, or do you think it entices you to play the game even more? Um, kind regards, Norbo Norbert Coleus Radis Lickle. Well, it's an honor to butcher your name for like the half dozen dozenth time, Norbert. Thank you for your question. Have you heard about this feature, Paul? I have not, but it sounds just like the kind of FOMO stuff that they're always doing in Fortnite. Yep. Okay, so the elusive targets are it's it's a new it's a new mission, but it takes place on an existing level. Like uh Sapienza is my favorite hitman level of all time, right? It's just this just this giant mansion grounds with just it is so big and so complicated, and there's so many things to do in it. But they'll reuse that level, but you'll have a new target instead of like you know the drug king I, I forget like who lives in sapienza that you're supposed to that you're supposed to murder some drug lord or kingpin or crime boss or you know tin pot dictator whatever you're supposed to kill the guy sure. but instead of kill, killing that guy it'll be a different version of the level there'll be all the guards are in different places there'll be different checkpoints and you'll just have this random target okay but so it's like procedurally generated maybe no, it's not proc gen. It's it's handcrafted, oh. and there's but it's only available for I don't know like a couple days or one day. I forget. It's not a long win. It's not a big window. And so this is I, something that they're they're making on a constant basis. Like they're creating these levels by hand or whatever, setting it up, 
releasing it and then they just take it down after a couple of days. Exactly. Exactly. And um, I feel the same way that Norbert does about this. I hate it so much. Even though I love the idea of alternate levels and, oh, that, that's such a neat thing to do. And I, I don't mind the, the recycled content of like, oh, I have to play this level again. I'm totally fine with that in Hitman. It's one of those games you don't mind playing the same level over and over. There, there's usually some, you can appreciate it in new ways. Oh, I never had to go down the hallway this way. Oh, that's actually really hard because of that window and the guards outside. Oh, I never thought of that. You know, and the level can feel fresh and new even if it's the same layout is what I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, the elusive targets piss me off so bad. Um, Not piss me off, but just like... I hate that they create this feeling of obligation. Like this is content and I bought the game. Now, there's here's some content, but I have to play it when they say so if I want access to the content. Yeah. And that's not And that's not how I, you know, it's like, well, I'm kind of in the middle of a, you know, game of Terraria or whatever. I don't want to drop that to go play a Hitman today just because it's only available today. And um so, yeah, I really resent it. I, I really hate it. And they, they use that as an excuse for why the game needs to be always online. If you go offline, it, like, clears all your unlocks and everything. Like, you can't really enjoy the game and master it and get all the endings if you're not online. Because all your stuff is saved mm. online. So, yeah, I nah. totally even... Yeah. I totally resent all of that all of the online component of it it's awful the thing that it reminded me of was uh the daily runs in noita where they've got you can play noita is all proc gen so it's not like it's handcrafted which is a right. major diversion but uh right in noita you can play a game and you can start up a new level and it'll just pick a random seed or you can do the daily run and it's the same seed for that whole day so you can practice it and explore it and you know get good at that one level instead of doing a new one every single time um but that's kind of like the opposite approach to this kind of content right like in in hitman it's always the same level and then once a day or i don't know once a week i don't know how often these things are but like every so often you'll get a new thing that's new but it only lasts for a day or two or whatever Whereas in Noida, it's like always new, and then it, and then you can choose to play in a mode where it is the same for a day. Uh, so it's right. kind of it, it reminded me of that same kind of thing, but it seems like it, when it's proc gen, you don't feel like someone is, had made something for you, right? Like you get up in the morning and your spouse is like, "Hey, I made you breakfast." And you're thinking like, oh, I wasn't planning on eating breakfast this morning, but now I guess I'm going to because you made this thing for me. And you're, like you said, you're obligated to participate in it because like someone spent effort to do this for you. Where I just don't get the same feeling with proc gen. It's like, oh, well, you know, the computer will make me something if I ask it, but it hasn't made it yet. And like, right. I'm under an obligation to engage with it. Right. And, you know, these elusive targets are often, they have bespoke character models and voice acting voice acting they're spending money on this it, and real money you know and speaking of your problem with apex legends you know evidently my computer at some point downloaded this elusive target their character model all these lines of dialogue and whether or not i'm going to use it or not just eating up my bandwidth in the background ah uh, yeah i wonder if there's it seems like there's got to be a way to for them to have some sort of way to like save these levels so that people can play them later. Do you think there's, do you think the technology has reached the point where they could do that? Save data until later, huh? Maybe somebody will make a way for computers to do that in the future. Yeah, they really should. Seems like, seems like it would be a huge advantage for players because then they could just play what they wanted when they wanted instead of it being like a television show where you have to be sitting on your couch at 7 p.m. All right, then people could enjoy it like it is if it was entertainment. Oh, that would be so interesting where it would be convenient for the audience. 
Huh. Video games on demand. There we go. We've got a we've got a market <laughs> for it. Right. Nah, it'll never catch on. Dear Diecast, have you checked the most played games list on Steam lately? I find it quite an interesting list. Apparently, some games stay fun forever. GTA V, still the top 10. Others are hardly played anymore, despite being very good. Metro 2033 Redux. I think the replayability factor is what keeps games on the list. Interestingly, despite Seamus claiming that nobody wants to play Left 4 Dead 4 anymore, L4D2 is on 23rd place, with 17,000 concurrent players at this very moment. Also, I find it hilarious that Cyberpunk 2077, the most anticipated game of 2020, has now already been overtaken by Age of Empires 2, a game that launched in 1999. Are there any thoughts that you want to share on this list? Best regards, pseudonym. Okay, so thank you, pseudonym, for your question. Uh, I wanted to get to this email this week because reading this last week was why I was looking at the list of most played games, which is why the kids saw Apex Legends, which is why they wanted to play it. Interesting. Yeah, it's all, it's here and it's high on the list too. It's uh, it, as of this recording, it's number four. Yeah, it's right up there. But just below Destiny 2, which is just below Dota 2. Dota 2, at this moment, is the second most played game on Steam. Dota 2. When was the last time anyone, anyone said the words Dota 2 in your presence? Or you, you know, I mean, online in terms of like, when was the last time you saw a screenshot or somebody make a joke or a meme or anyone to mention the game or reference it or to use it in a, co oh boy, that sure is different from Dota 2, which I'm totally still playing. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who's playing, but it's not me. Right, me neither. I've never, like, if you asked me, when was the last time you heard anybody reference D Dota 2 in any context? I would say it's been at least six months. But no, it is currently the second most played game on Steam right now. At this moment. I think uh, it is just so amazing that 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 entire genre came out of the Warcraft 3 modding scene. Right? That is just so amazing. Started out as a mod. And so, if you think about it, that means Warcraft spawned, uh, you know, Warcraft 3 spawned Dota 2, which is, right now, the second most popular game on Steam. But Warcraft also led to StarCraft, which led to the creation of eSports. Like you could, and Warcraft is, you know, the origin of World of Warcraft. So I wonder if you could make the case that Warcraft is one of, is like the most influential game ever made. As it far certainly as seems like, like a strong case could be made. Yeah. Right. It's just for, as far as like, you know, I'm sure more total people played like Minecraft or whatever, but as far as like spawning different genres and you know being entire genres and industries yeah right it's just it shook the entire industry multiple times and all of that came from one studio the studio that also created diablo like wow early blizzard is just amazing <laughs> it was just this factory of industry shaking mon you know monoliths I wonder how the numbers compare with the Blizzard games right now, because they're not on Steam at all. They've got their whole platform no. all cordoned off. Right, and that's a shame. I would love to see, like, where does Diablo 3 rank these days in number of concurrent players? Or, you know, World of Warcraft. What's the concurrent players on that? That would be interesting. I wonder if you can know that. I wonder if there's somebody's figured out a way to track that. There's got to be data somewhere, but... Yeah, I don't know what it is. A lot of these games I've never played. Uh, Apex Legends I played a little bit. TFT2, Team Fortress 2, I, I played that uh, a little a little bit, maybe 20, 30 hours or something. But that was years and years ago. It's incredible that it's got the staying power. Like, Apex Legends, brand new, basically brand new, you know, a year old or whatever. Team Fortress 2, like, a decade old, maybe? And, <laughs> and they're right there. It's like, yep, 
just about the same. I feel like the um, the game design and and in systems design has kind of matured, and there doesn't seem to be a lot of development in that space right now. Because like, if TFT two has has the same staying power as Apex Legends, then it can't have developed too much. Unless I suppose there's a way for maybe people have different tastes, and you know, TFT two is is satisfying something that Apex Legends. Uh, it's time to find right. something else. I love PUBG. the Terraria. <laughs> I love that Terraria is number 16 on this list. A 2D side-scrolling game that's what? How old is Terraria? Is it 10 years old? Yeah, I think it is. And and above Valheim, which is a brand new, you know, uh, survival <laughs> game. They're both kind of survival <laughs> games, right? Right. Yeah, Terraria is 10 years old this year, and it is currently... The 16th most played game on Steam right now. Mass Effect? Never played it? I've heard it's um, interesting. Uh, is that the sci-fi game? I think it's a, a bro shooter, actually. Oh, interesting. I should check it out someday. I'm really into bro shooters. <laughs> Final um, Fantasy. Oh, that's weird. On Civ 6. So, I just looked it up, and... According to these numbers online, the peak players in a day um, for World of Warcraft in the last 30 days is about 600,000. That would put it that would put it just on top of the most played games on Steam. It would just nudge out Counter-Strike every Not by day much. for yeah. the past 12 years. <laughs> Wait, 12 years? It's been longer than... Didn't it come out in... It's, yeah, it's probably been longer than 12 years. I think... 15, it was like 2005, maybe? right? Oh, I thought I was... I, I'm pretty sure... It was sure before it, I graduated from college. But still, it's interesting that it's within the bounds of this list. I mean, it would be at the top of this list, but it's not like... Way, it doesn't blow this list away. Like Right, right. And it hasn't fallen off the bottom either. Right, right. Uh, peak players in a day is 596,000, and the top game on Steam is 547,000. Now, that's... Okay, now, it, this is not a one-to-one -one comparison. One is, the Counter-Strike is, right now, there are about 550,000 players playing at this moment. Yeah, yeah, which but 24-hour peak is a million. Right. And so if we go on 24 hour peak, it's going to be just below Dota 2, just between Dota 2 and PUBG. Right. And that's probably where this number belongs. It's peak players in a day, which sounds like it. Yeah. Which sounds like it should correlate to this second column on this chart. So you're right. You're right. Peak players in a day would put World of Warcraft at number at number three on this list. Wow, hmm. there's a drastic fall off. Like the first two games on Dota and Counter Strike, and then there's a long gap <laughs> of like several hundred thousand before you get to the number three game. Yeah. Well, twenty four hour. If you look at the twenty four hour peak, it's not so huge, right? It, it's like half every step. Yeah. Still, it's weird how these top three games... Okay, I hear people discuss Destiny 2 on a regular basis, and that, that's right now number three. But Dota 2 and Counter-Strike, I never hear people talk about them, ever. And those are the top two. Like, and does that mean that those communities are just incredibly insular? Because, I mean, I have all kinds of people on my site, you know, people reference all kinds of games on my site, even though... I tend to focus on story-heavy stuff. You know, there will be people that talk about all kinds of different games, but never, never Dota 2. Yeah, it, it seems like it's kind of a, like you said, it's kind of an insular community. Like the hero uh, strategy, what, what is that called? What's the genre? Uh, MOBA, multi... MOBA, multi yeah. Multi multiplayer online battle arena. Because there was that other one. What was the um, under underworld heroes or something? Oh, there's Heroes of the Storm, Hots, and uh, there was one more, wasn't there? 
like the big I forget one. the name is Riot. Riot League. Games. League of Legends, yeah, yeah. League of Legends is also its its own like system, right? Like they don't show up on any of the any of this stuff. But they're they've got apparently huge uh esports chops. Or at least did a year ago. Right. It seems like the year of the pandemic should have been the year of esports because you could still do them just fine. But for whatever reason, right. they want to have people in the same building with each other or something. I, I don't know. Right. Yeah, StarCraft tournaments were like... They either canceled them or they felt really small and they weren't... Pre the, it, it felt like people were less interested in them. Even though it should have been the year, like you said, the year of esports. City Skylines is on there. That's pretty cool. Stardew Valley. Uh, City Skylines, Pirate, uh, um, Pyradox, the the publisher, um, just had their con, their big announcement thing. Instead of doing E3, they've got their own thing, and they announced it, and I was like, oh boy, oh boy, this is it, Skylines too, and it was like they released <gasps> like. They released th their big city skylines announcement was, oh, here's we're selling some new bridges for five dollars. Get the bridges pack. <laughs> I was crushed. Like I was ready to get back into the game, and, and no, it was just nothing. It was just it wasn't even it wasn't even a content pack like a full DLC like they've been doing every year. All right, <clears throat> I'll do this next one. Dear Diecast, since December I have been playing Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition. As of this moment, the game is ranked 50 on the most played games on the Steam list. Oh, pseudonym, you've got two emails back to back along the same theme. As um, of this recording, it's 47. It's climbing. I wonder what you think of this game. It has some properties that I think you might find interesting. Um... Yeah, it comes with a random map generator, the AI doesn't cheat, and the art style makes it so that, um, I mean, it it's it feels like a late, I believe it is a late 90s RTS, so yeah, it doesn't need any 3D render, or it, you know, it doesn't tax your card, everything's friggin' sprites. Hmm. Additionally, it comes with 151 single-player scenarios, which all have voice acting. The multiplayer scene is alive and kicking. The excellent map ge generator provides endless replayability for both single-player and multiplayer. I am curious what you think. Best regards, pseudonym. So, um, I was really into Age of Empires back in the day. Like, back in the early aughts. I remember even playing it at the office at Active Worlds. <laughs> And um, I played it at home. I messed around with the maps. Uh, I kind of lost interest uh, with it when Rise of Nations came out. Just because at the time, I felt like Rise of Nations was a more... It had more. More content. More stuff to do. And I mm -hmm. just liked it better. But going strictly by, like audience reception age of empires 2 is much more po is the game of this particular like um is so much more important than rise of nations in, in terms of you know how many people care about the game right um you know i do think it's a very important game i think it's a very interesting game I like that it does different stuff. It doesn't it doesn't come from that same Warcraft lineage. Like there, there's a I right. forget there's like five different resources. You get stone and gold and wood and food and and uh one other thing plus relics. Like that's a lot. There's a lot going on where like the other RTS games are almost always built around two resources. And this has this mm. weird five different resources, and it's a very. I always thought, um, were, I always thought, Age of Empires. It must have been really hard to make good AI because the game. There's so the possibility space of what you can do is so much larger than StarCraft. Um, that yeah, like how I, do you? I recall it being. Hmm. Well, so I I never really played it. It seems like there was like a, a whole. A whole set of of sects inside of the PC gaming world. Who's so like when I was 
when I was young playing games a lot, you know, stuff, uh, high school, uh, there was the console guys, right? And there's like the, the Sony console guys. And then there was the Nintendo people. Nintendo people were more like, you know, little kids or, or like, uh, you know, people who their parents wouldn't let them get violent games. And so they had a Nintendo and then there was the PC gamers, but the PC gamers were also like subdivided into like the, the Blizzard fans, which is kind of where me and my brothers were. And then like the Age of Empires slash Command and Conquer, I feel like were like a, right. a group of people that would do all that stuff. And then there was like the, the JRPG fans that were always, you know, that like Final Fantasy VII was like the huge thing for them. And then there was like all that, you know, getting into like ROMs and stuff. And, uh, and so like, it's weird because like you could play all those games at like on your computer like there's no reason you couldn't but the culture that was developed around them just kind of tended to silo people right that's very true that's very true and you know i never see people compare like command and conquer and the blizzard lineage or like the, these games of different lineages there did not seem to be a lot of people that played both like you said there's not like oh i've played both and here's what i think comparing the two together in a way that you see people play both grand theft auto and saints row and they'll compare the two but i never saw anybody like okay yeah age of empires does this and starcraft does this it was like they they were stuck in their individual silos and i don't know how much of that is just perception or how much of that is reality yeah, I don't know either. I think part of it was that we, like, it took us a, a longer time. I feel like it took a longer time for us to learn how to play each game. And then if you want to play with your friends, your friends had to know how to play the game so you could play together, multiplayer or whatever. And also it was a lot harder to do multiplayer because you really had to be on a LAN. Like, internet gaming was, unless you're yeah. playing Doom with all their optimizations, you really couldn't. So you had to be on a LAN. So it was like a big deal. You get all your friends together for like, you know, on a, a Saturday or something when you're all out of school and you finished all your homework and like you're going to play some video games together and you don't want to be sitting down and like learning how to play a game. You want to play a game you already know. And so like the the barrier to entry was so much higher. And also like computers were relatively more expensive and, and relatively less powerful. So like having a computer that could play a game or a set of games was... a significant investment and like nowadays you can get them for pretty right. cheap and and the requirements are if you want to get like a super hot video gaming console you know pc or something then yeah it's expensive but it's not as bad as it used to be and so like there's all these barriers to entry and so as a result you would focus on one game that you were all playing and like you'd all be playing at the same time so you'd all be at relatively level same skill level because like right it would it's be the same thing would... you couldn't go online and find people to play with you because how would you do that there's no the internet's not fast enough right you'd all have the same five-year-old game that you were into because yeah that, the 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 worst computer in your peer group that's that's what that's what poor oh, yeah exactly yeah, exactly poor kevin his his parents never upgraded his computer so he was stuck on this horrible old you know you know 90s computer and that was the best game he could play so everybody else came down to his level <laughs> and so we were yeah. all limited by the the slowest computer in our peer group and the guy who had the desk big enough to hold all the CRTs. Right. <laughs> you forget about it. Your memory erases that from from your experience. Like when I think back to land gaming, I think I visualize LCDs, but we didn't have those. We had, you know, giant old things. You get a flat screen CRT and it's like 20 pounds or more. Oh, these, these monstrous, heavy things that just emanate this field of static electricity and heat. So the room just gets so hot. 
and you have to close the door because the games are loud and everybody's yelling and you've got somebody's mom in the other room telling you to keep it down so you shut the door and of course you don't want sunlight glaring off these curved screens so you close the window and the curtains and now you're locked in the box with these little friggin space heaters playing hours and hours of of land games until the the stench of your human sweat drives you out of the room <laughs> uh-huh yep yep oh man Gaming sure has come a long way. Right? Now my screen is flat, and it's nice and dark in here all the time. This is this is what we wanted 20 years ago. We just we've we've built those places into our house now. I've I've got a nice dark, cool room where I can do my thing. All by myself, because now I have the space but not the friends. Aww. Hi. I wish Seamus good health. May the, but what do they eat, live long and prosper. Now for the question itself. Considering that your blog is one of the prominent topics of Proc Gen and that you are familiar with the Elder Scrolls series, is it not weird that you don't talk or mention Daggerfall or Arena? What's your opinion of them, and have you ever played them? Best regards, Deadly Dark. Um, so, my, I have this weird gap in gaming. I stopped video gaming in the early 80s when my Atari broke and I didn't really get back into video gaming until the mid-ish 90s well with Doom I think Doom is what brought me back to the PC but there was like I missed that that's a big gap that's over 10 years where I missed gaming and even then I, I barely engaged with PC gaming until the late 90s. I was just so into programming. I just, you know, didn't do it. I didn't have time for gaming. And to be fair, that gap roughly coincides with the big video game crash, right? Yeah, it does. And, um, you know, it was really hard for me to get a gaming-ready computer back then. It's like my computer, my parents weren't buying me anything like that. And then I got out on my own and I was too broke. And it wasn't until the mid-90s that I had a machine that I could start playing modern games on. And so I missed the beginning of the Elder Scrolls. And when I went back into gaming, I like didn't realize that role-playing games would be my thing. I played Doom. I was fascinated with that technology. So I explored a lot of that end of gaming. And it wasn't until years later, like around KOTOR time or around Morrowind, that I discovered... I loved RPGs. So mm, I missed a, yeah. I I missed a lot of RPGs. So that's why I've never talked about the early parts of the Elder Scrolls. I'm sure I looked at those games a hundred times on the shelf, but I was like, doesn't look like Doom. I, what would I do with it? It's not my <laughs> wheelhouse. I don't need another coaster. Story? <laughs> story? Oh, I can't have, imagine ever caring about story in a video game. <laughs> Um, in the Proc Gen and Daggerfall, while at the time was groundbreaking, is not very interesting by today's standards. Just an infinite flat plane with very similar feeling towns. It does not look or feel interesting when you look at it now, even though other, you know, you just go a little bit newer and the, the Proc Gen stuff starts getting a lot more interesting. But, um, but yeah, but it was a worthy title. It was important. It was more influential than it was interesting. Put it that way. Hmm. It was more I've, important I've never than fun. I've never even looked at either of these games. Uh, although I think Retzgarn did a series, didn't he? On the, he did. the Elder Scrolls. And so oh, I, I'm familiar was, with them through was, that series. It was very fun. If I remember, I'll link them in the show notes. Uh, they were very funny, especially his series on Arena was just hilarious oh yeah that was a good time so but i i never really got into the elder scrolls games i've never really played them um i like everyone else i i have become siloed in in some genres and i've just never i have i've left the elder scrolls to other people so yeah i can't speak to it unfortunately dear diecast i know game of thrones wasn't Seamus' cup of tea but with its end and popularity has come the adventure, the advent of numerous high-budget fantasy shows being put into production from multiple studios and companies, 
HBO has multiple Game of Thrones related prequels coming up, starting with House of the Dragon. Wheel of Time is finally getting a show, and so is Percy Jackson. And Amazon is developing their own show, set in Tolkien's Legendarium, with a ludicrous budget of $400 million on just the first two seasons. I was wondering how Seamus and Paul are feeling about this. Sincerely, Donkey. Thank you, Donkey. Did you just say Donkey in Shrek voice? Because that's how I read uh -huh. it, too. Yep, well, that's it's funny. nothing else to do. Right. I couldn't help but donkey. Yeah, I couldn't help it either. It's just... Okay, I am sorry to say I don't actually care. Not even about the Tolkien's Legendarium. Um, I'm burned out on medieval fantasy. I'm just not into it. I don't care. I feel like... I feel like I've just played through a decade of medieval fantasy between Witcher, um, Dragon Age, and a bunch of other ones that and elder scrolls and i'm just done i'm done i don't care anything let's go to space let's travel through time anything but more medieval fantasy i don't care so i'm not excited about any of this the only thing i might care about is tolkien but i am knowing nothing about the project i am sure that it will not contain the elements of tolkien that i love I love it. Hmm. It's difficult for me to describe the parts of Tolkien that I love because they have to do with the sensibilities of the work, the idealism. Most people are like, yeah, dragons and elves and legendary swords. And I'm like, I love this story where this tiny, harmless person could save the world through love. That is why I love Lord of the Rings. Right, right. A world, a, a, a dangerous, monstrous world can nevertheless be properly addressed by selflessness and self-sacrifice. Yes. It's, it's the hero's journey, really. But it's like this, right. it's this beautifully rendered, embellished version of the hero's journey that has never really been replicated before or since. Right. It's so deeply idealistic just do the right thing and and the and everything will work out fine just do the right thing and have compassion and love and faith and hope and and that does not resonate with today's audiences people do not have i mean there were a lot of compromises to bring lord of the rings to the to the big screen and i managed to let those go but i know every adaptation when the when people adapt Lord of the Rings now, they're adapting the movies. I mean, they'll claim, yeah. like, oh, no, we, we studied the source material. Yeah, but you're copying the sensibilities of the movies. So for me, this is a copy of a copy. And so I don't care about any of this stuff. That's not to say it shouldn't exist or that it's bad. It's just it's going to have sensibilities that do not appeal to me. Yeah, I feel like if you really wanted to make the Lord of the Rings in the way that would address like the you'd, it'd have to be like a, a multimedia production it'd have to be like a slice of life anime for the first 10 episodes and then it turns into like a travel log for like the next 10 episodes and then it'd have to right. be some sort of like war documentary and then like a survival series like because it's got all of those elements in it, you can't just fit it into one genre. It's its own thing. It's a it's right. A, it, it's supposed to be a living world. It's not supposed to be a a genre. Right. You can't turn it into the jungle level, the fire level, the ice level, and the cave level. It just you <laughs> cannot adapt it that way. Um. Although, if they did something like near Automata, where they had like different ways of looking at the what was going on and like lots of different mechanics and, and like really trying to get the mechanics rooted in the in the the atmosphere of it because that's what so much of it is atmospheric yes that atmosphere and mm. characters that just are the characters are very arch i mean yeah everybody is like idealistic always does the right thing 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're well they're they're true to themselves even if who they are isn't sufficient to cuz you know like Boromir is like he's a oh, it's so sad. Oh, it's so sad, Seamus. Oh, the Lord of the Rings I is know. so sad and it's so good and it's so pure and like ah, oh, I don't want to I don't want to sully that with even the movies were I I didn't um I didn't really engage with them. I like I watched them once, but I it's it's always felt like something of a violation. It's like ah uh, It feels like voyeurism. It feels like imaginative voyeurism to try to visualize the Lord of the Rings. Hmm. Cause like the the feeling of of reading the books and of being and putting myself in that world is such a such a personal intimate thing and it feels like the the effort that Tolkien put into embellishing the world was such a personal intimate thing that like taking that and putting it on a stage feels wrong yeah there are a lot the I think I've complained about this before but for me the 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 moment that sort of defines what happens to Tolkien when you adapt him is the conversation with the mouth of Sauron. The mouth of Sauron comes out to treat with Gandalf and Aragorn. And he brings, like, Frodo's robes to, like, taunt them. Hey, check it out. Look what I got. And, you know, leading them to believe that Frodo was now dead. Mm -hmm. And this was an incredible moral test. This, no, not a test. This was a demonstration of Aragorn's character and courage that he could meet Sauron in the eye and Sauron or the mouth of Sauron felt threatened like Aragorn would cut him down. But of course, Aragorn or Aragorn would never do that. He would never kill his enemy. That's what Sauron would do. Sauron was projecting his own malice and evil and underhandedness onto his enemy, which is, by the way, the reason he lost in the first place, is he assumed right. that like, there's no way they would lose, they, there's yeah. no way they would throw the ring away. They would use it because I would yeah, use well, it. He, yeah, it was a lack, it was a lack of empathy. And, and that goes right back to free radical and like, oh, it's so good. <laughs> and in the movie, they just like, he comes out and shows them the thing and Aragorn cuts his head off. And I'm like, oh. Oh, it's that's slander. You slandered this character. Right. Yeah. It was such an important moment. But I understand that makes sense in the context of a movie. This was a mental thing where the author was able to tell us what everybody was thinking. Very hard to convey in a movie. And if you're trying to do a movie, just having the good guy be a badass is way easier and 99% of the people won't care. But that same logic, when applied to a copy of a copy, and then a copy of a copy of a copy to this same work, is going to erode it so that it will lose everything that made it special. And it'll just be, you know, oh, it's kind of like Game of Thrones now. Oh boy, can't wait to see what elf boobies look like. So more seriously, I, I though, like of all these of all these uh, uh, different uh, series, uh, Tolkien's Legendarium is for me also the one that would be most attractive. And like you, I'm just not interested in seeing what the, uh, the massive cyberpunk mega corp thinks that it will be able to pass by as entertainment for today's audience. Yeah, yeah. It's just it can't survive. It can't survive in today's environment. And that's not like a condemnation. That's just an acceptance of the reality. It's a wonderful book. And that is its ideal form is that book. All right. Thank you to everybody who sent in questions. I'm sorry we couldn't do them all. That was my fault. I went long on my topics. Um, <laughs> the blame falls on me. But thanks to everybody who sent in questions. If you've got a question for the show, the email is diecast at SeamusYoung.com. We got a question during the show. <laughs> I'm looking. Whoa. Yeah. 
Um, but that's gonna have to wait till next week along with these other. We nearly made it through the list, but not quite. Anyway, send your questions to diecast at shamusyun.com and we will see you next week. Say goodbye, Paul. Goodbye, Paul. Goodbye, Paul.